In this video, I want to look at how to add glare or bloom to a rendered image. You can see here that I've already got a rendered image and it looks okay, but by adding that glare, that bloom, it's, we can make it look a lot more interesting. It's also worth noting here that I'm rendering this in cycles and I do have the basic denoising turned on. So if I close this, you can see what's in the scene. I've got my camera, I've got a text that I've turned into a mesh and extruded a little bit. This mesh has a emissive or emission material on it with it's emitting this blue color and the strength is turned up to six. So it's fairly bright. I also have this sunlight here that's shining kind of a pinkish uh, light to it to give a little bit of contrast on the background. Background is just a plane that's been extruded and is shaded smoothly. So to do this, we're going to come up here to the tab up here and we're going to click use nodes. That'll bring up these two nodes and we want to add in two more nodes. The first one is the glare. This is what Blender calls a bloom. We'll add that in the middle. Been like that. Now well, that's great and that's actually going to work, but it's nice to have a preview so we can adjust our settings and get just the kind of glare that we want. So I'm going to add in a, another node, search for view. We're going to add in a viewer node like that. We're going to connect the image output from the glare to the image there. And what that does is it brings up the previously rendered image. So if this isn't showing up, it's probably because you have not rendered an image uh, recently or since you opened up Blender. And what's nice about this is now we can adjust the settings on the glare node and see what it's going to look like. This isn't affecting our actual render. All these effects are happening after our render. They're post-processing effects. Now, on the glare node, there's several different options. Streaks, ghosts, fog glow, and simple star. Personally, I tend to like the fog glow the best. If we do that, you see it changes a little bit. If you look down here on this node, we have two main settings. First is the mix, which is gonna go from negative one to positive one. And when it's at zero, we're using equal portions of the pre-rendered image with the post-processing image. If I turn it to negative one, you get just the original image. If you turn it to one, you get only the post-processing. Now for me personally, I found that something about around 0.3, maybe 0.4 works pretty well for this image. It darkens it up, the bloom, the glare becomes more prominent. The next setting down is the threshold. And this has to do with which pixels uh, or which light sources this effect will be applied to. If I lower that, more and more pixels will be added. If I go all the way down, even the background will tend to glare. It doesn't look very good. If we turn it up, fewer and fewer pixels uh, have this effect applied to it. They need to be brighter and brighter for it to be applied to. And that's really it. That's how we apply glare or bloom to our rendered image. If I now press F12 and give it a minute to render the image. As it's finishing up, you can see the original rendered image and then the post-processing effect applied at the end. And now we have that nice glare, that nice bloom to our image.